Honorable Mr. Tipton for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Appreciate you holding this hearing. And uh, Chief Tidwell, always a pleasure to be able to see you and appreciate you taking the time to be able to come to our subcommittee today. Uh, in your testimony, you noted that between 62 and 85 million acres of national forest land are classified as high fire risk. And mm -hmm. in Colorado, the Forest Service does partner with the state through the use of the good neighbor policy and authority to allow greater state input and discretion in hazardous fuel treatment projects. Uh, do you favor these types of frameworks that foster partnerships between the Forest Service and the state and local communities? Uh, yes, I do. I think you, Colorado is a great example of where um, we've been able to use the good neighbor authority and for the state and the Forest Service to work together. And then you all have a long list of communities that have stepped up in your state that are also working with us in conjunction so that we can get more of this work done, create more jobs, but primarily to be able to improve these watersheds so there's less of an impact from the next fire season. You know, I noted uh, during some of your comments to the chairman's question in regards to being able to create some economic opportunity and to concurrently to be able to increase the health of the forests. Mm -hmm. Uh, that you'd noted some of some of the carbon emissions that are offset by our national mm -hmm. forests. Have there ever been a study in terms of the carbon output when we do have a forest fire? Um, yes, there is. Uh, we have uh, our research scientists have have done analysis on on those events too. I mean, it's part of the the carbon cycle. But there's no question that if we can reduce the uh, the size of these catastrophic fires, we will. Uh, in the short term, you know, re reduce the amount of carbon emissions. It's one of the things, if we can um, change the fire behavior by thinning out these forests, we're still going to have fires, but they're going to burn at a much lower intensity, thus release less carbon into the atmosphere. I know in our areas that's going to be critically important uh, for the air quality issues yes. in terms of some other industry as well, the impacts that we had from the fires in Colorado this past year. I think we're pretty dramatic. When, when we are talking about being able to get in, create some of these treatments, uh, are you a little concerned in terms of some of the uh, management programs with road closures going on that's going to actually impact that opportunity to be able to get in and treat some of the forests? Well, before we make a decision on you know, closing a road, um, it, it's got to be a road that's not needed. So if there's a, a reason for us to be able to get in there to access, to be able to do, um, you know, treat areas, especially around our communities, you know, that's one of the things that's factored into, um, you know, into that decision. We do have more roads on the national forest than we need or, or can afford to maintain, and they're impacting the water quality to the point where there's some places they restrict um, you know, our ability to be able to manage some of the timber stands because of the amount of erosion that's coming from a road system that's, that's no longer needed. So by making good decisions to close decommissioned roads that are no longer needed, it actually it increases our ability to do more work. But we need to factor that in. If we need access into um, to be able to uh, get that work done, we need to get in there and get that work done before um, we... Um, to make a change in the access. And hopefully to be able to build in some flexibility into those rules as well to be able to address that. And you did note a number of the methods uh, that are in process now to be able to create some of the economic opportunity. Are there specific changes to current rules on stewardship uh, contracting that you believe would be beneficial? I'll tell you the first thing I believe in is to get it reauthorized. I mean, it's, it's just an important tool for us. We're doing about 25% of our, um, our work through stewardship contracts. We'll always, you know, use our timber sale contracts. But it's a tool where there's strong support across the board for that. It creates more jobs. So the first thing would be able to, um, to get it, uh, you know, reauthorized so that our folks know that we're going to be able to continue to, um, to have this authority. Uh, you know, in your testimony, I think that you explained very clearly the degree to which uh, active forest management is actually necessary to be able to create healthy forests. And mm -hmm. our district, where we have one program going on in Pagosa Springs, we saw that the yeah. groundwater actually went up 15% uh, after mm -hmm. the forests were treated. The health of the trees returned within two weeks uh, to be able to get in. Uh, but I think it's very important in Colorado with the forest public lands where they are interspersed with the state and the private lands as well uh, to be able to bring together a comprehensive approach to be able to deal with this patchwork uh, that we're dealing with. And 
We've introduced, as I know that you are aware, uh, the Healthy Forest Management and Wildfire Act, uh, which is going to be very important as we approach this coming forest uh, firefighting season uh, to be able to address and to be able to empower those states, those local communities to be able to play an active role because it's not only the urban interface with wildlands, but it's also when we start to get into those deeper areas of the forest, how that impacts our water quality and ability to be able to address it. And uh, hope that we're going to be able to count on your support to be able to push that forward. And thank you for being here. I yield back, Mr. Chairman. I thank the gentleman for